Oh, sorry guys. Had a whole post going on and then hit the button. On my way to do something <laughs> that I don't feel like doing. I'm still contempla contemplating. I'm learning to not jump so fast. All the time. I still may. I feel like when I jump fast. When I just operate as myself everything shakes loose you know it's like sometimes you're around people have people around you places things live certain place whatever and because you don't take the jump or you just don't go on and do what you know is right for yourself you start counting the cost and this and that and this and that and uh yeah leads to other stuff but anyway um I'm excited. I finished. It's Tuesday. I finished my three miles. I feel good. I'm still doing my turtle walk. <laughs> I run so slow. And um, probably not even run. Probably scoop or something. Sometimes I get inside my own head because I remember how fast I used to run. I remember this. remember that. And I'm just like, girl, that's not you no more. I'm not even sure what is me because it's... Um, how I even decided to run this time was uh, Michael has not seen me run at the Gate River run before, although we've been going on six years now. However, our schedules just never lined up, and so this is like the first time that his schedules lined up. So I had been like, I'm not running, I'm done, you know, I'm good. Um, I've been working on myself so that the emotional eating that I was doing you know, my weight was going all the way up to 193 and, you know, brought it all the way down to 134. <coughs> 148. <laughs> was holding at 160 for, for a long time. However, it's like I was using food to uh, cope and soothe myself. And I wasn't looking past it. I was pushing past it. You know, I get these moments where I'm just going to be all in and be strong and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? I keep on doing the same thing to myself. Let me just keep doing the same thing to myself. And this time start asking questions, you know. And that's all what I'm really sharing is just, you know, I just started asking questions because things just didn't add up, you know. I was thinking about um, how certain stories, you know, I'm coming from a Christian background. And uh, so I was thinking about certain stories. And it's like today, if you took the story of Moses, where his mother put him in the river in a basket and set him off. Think about how that story would be reported today. And think about what Moses would be saying when he grew up because he would grow up hearing his sister and the people who took him in tell him how trifling his mother was because she put him in a basket, you know, and threw him in the water, you know. Oh, so what were you doing now? Oh, I wanted these other people. Who are those people? Your enemies? Yeah, I wanted my enemies to have my child. So you, a child you love and care for, you wanted your enemies to have. Okay. All right. I mean, what would the APA, what mental illness would she be diagnosed with? What trauma would Moses have? What would he be saying about his mother? You know, would he be so traumatized that he wouldn't even, he couldn't even get to leading the people to the Red Sea because he's just traumatized because his mother didn't want him and didn't love him and didn't care for him. What about Abraham and Isaac? Abraham, you know, manipulated black emotionally blackmailed his son is like come on come on come on come on with me and then it's like well where's the sacrifice and his father's like well you're the sacrifice and guess what he did because he was you know that's my father i'm gonna obey him or whatever he went ahead and climbed on the the, the altar thing it's like man what would you say if you knew the leader of your community had his child took him up to sacrifice him you know, I mean, it's like, 
it's like following after these ways and then you believe that you have some kind of um, trauma or you know something's going on you know and it's like so when your mom beat you or your dad beat you or left you or did this or did that they didn't put you in the water they didn't put you on top of a pyre to, bur to burn up um you know your mom sarah didn't um go to your father and say hey i don't have no i can't have any kids i'm too old so go ahead and take my handmaiden and so then she turns around and turn and and the and she has a baby plus the handmaiden has a baby now you're mad because the handmaiden had a baby the side chick had a baby in the same like and now these two brothers and these two brothers are at odds for generations. You created generations of people who are going to be at odds with each other. And and if you roll back the tape, you find out that um, Abraham and Sarah. I mean, she was like, "Hey, I'm too old. Go ahead and step out with the side chick. No one's mad at you. The brother shouldn't be mad at you. The brother should have grown up in love and everything." It's like, so you did what, say what, what with side chick? And now you're mad and acting like something happened to you and someone did something to you. I mean, what about David? David wanted a woman. She was married. So she sent her, he sent her husband to the front line. Think about that today. You know, you're doing the whatever war you remember. And you find out that, you know, because it's social media and, you know, the side chick is like, you know, oh, yeah, well, my husband's unlive, unalive now because, you know, his commanding officer sent him to the front line so we can sleep together. And then the story of Absalom and his sister, you know, oh, yeah, that's my sister, but I'm going to get I'm going to get with it. <laughs> I mean, it's these I'm, I'm just I'm just saying peel the layers back you know and that's all i did i was like man this dude who who's called god and stuff he doesn't sound like he's okay you know and i'm like i'm just not the one to be following after false people it's like okay i'll follow you for a while and then stuff just starts not adding up and whatever's in me whoever i am at the time i didn't know i know that's just me at the time i didn't know because it was so many things that were telling me that I was bad and wrong so I'm thinking anything I'm thinking is bad and wrong however that's why I say you have to know yourself because when it when the stuff gets when the shit hits the fan when the stuff's against the wall you know it's like you are hanging on someone else's word and that's not good enough it's not good enough if you for whatever you call your higher power to know them through your pastor or through your mother your grandmother this and that that's not good enough because shit is hitting the fan and it's hitting you in a way that everyone's telling you to pray it away or everyone's telling you it's not that bad or everyone's disregarding your feelings and stuff like that and telling you it's okay and these are people you look up to and you just keep the same slave mentality oh swing low sweet yeah. one day God's gonna come and save me I mean just ask ask the person who set this all in motion think about it if you were the one who set everything in motion what would you be doing right now would you be letting your child be unalive? Would you be letting your father be unalive in a car wreck? Would you be letting your grandmama suffer and, 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 and not have food and her house has holes in it? Would you be letting yourself be in this much pain? So it's like, all I'm saying is like, peel back the layers. Think about it. If you're so afraid of a higher power that you can't even ask a question to, I mean, who is that? What psychological problems do they have that you can't even come? You're supposed to be their child. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. But you can't ask God a question. Oh, no. That's disrespectful. That's, I don't. If my kids came and asked me, look, lady, 
I know you said I'm your child and I may have some features that look like you, but I've been watching 23 and me and all that. And our features are going to look alike because we're supposed to be a few little tweaks from an elephant and this and that. So we all could look alike and be not even connected the way they? I need a DNA test. Here's a swab. Which I wouldn't be mad. I'd be like, cool. Here you go, bet. <laughs> do you my I want my kids to know themselves I want my anyone to know themselves I want anyone who comes in connection to me to know themselves because what I understand people will always let you down no matter what your title is mother father sister brother sibling pastor um, commander in the military um, I just watched where uh, they laid to rest these uh, two ladies one of the ladies from was from Waycross Georgia where um, um the nelson family is and you know she got you know unalive by a drone over there i didn't know jordan i thought jordan was egypt and they're missing iran why was iran and jordan i don't know i'm just saying it's like so much stuff going on that it's just like man you have to ask yourself questions because things just don't make sense and that's all I started doing. You know, I started like, man, I changed so I could be a part of my family. And I still wasn't a part of the family in the way that I wanted to be. And I changed for this. I changed for that. And, and it was just a, a, a heartbreaking uh, realization that you could be changing and working on yourself all day long. And you'll never hit the marks that a person that you're changing for <coughs> thinks is good enough or well enough. And then I just got tired i got tired i'm like dad i done turned myself into a pretzel trying to be around you folk maybe i'm not trying to maybe i shouldn't be trying to be around you all who are you all anyway because you know my eyes were i was turning a blind eye to their flaws and all of that because what the world tells you to don't look at your mother's flaws don't look at your father i've done the best i could but before people were saying they did the best they could, they were telling you, if you said anything, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. And then the next generation was like, I did the best I could. And then the next generation after my parents' generation, which is my generation, we just didn't know what the hell to do. Giving our kids everything, doing everything. Kids are running amok. They're not winding up in college like we thought they would. Stuff is going left. And then we don't stop and say the 85%, including 85%, don't stop and look at ourselves and figure out what's going on. We just keep pushing through because we have these automatic built-in um, worshipers. You know, when you don't have your father and you only have your mother, you're going to worship her in an unnatural way. When you're, when you're between a mother and the father, your father saying this about the mother, mother saying this about the father, you're looking at your half and half of which you're wondering which you are. You know, I was scared of my own self for a long time. I wouldn't even go near my brother's children because I was scared if I had a child within arm's limb, I was going to snatch him and hit him and spank him or do something. I was afraid of myself. You know, I was sexually abused as a child. And I was like afraid that I was like that. For the longest time, I was afraid that I was like that. I was like, oh, God, you know, am I going to do that? You know what I'm saying? I was scared of my own children. It's like, <laughs> you know, and I had no one to talk to. Because I'm always the bad. I'm always the wrong. I'm always this. Oh, she's doing this. Oh, she's doing that. You know, like the black sheep or whatever. So I'm always doing something. But never looking at, if you keep beating me all the time, if you keep yelling at me, if you keep putting me in a dark room, if you don't show me affection, if you just call me stupid, if you have nothing edifying and uplifting for me, but you're telling me that my life is good because so I'm living in a beautiful house in a nice community, going to a nice school. Oh, your parents are so wonderful. They're ministers or this. They're great. They can be all that. At the same time, things are going on that I don't think is okay. And that's what I'm saying. We should be able to have the conversation. If your child is sensitive, like I'm super sensitive, no one should have been yelling at me because I'm thinking what some of these other children are doing to their parents. I'm like, Dad, why not just go through with that? 
Why didn't I pick up the phone and call Child Protective Service? You know what I'm saying? It's like this and that. It's like, because it's like, man, it's like, well, I don't want to do that to my parents, but I want them to stop. I don't want to do this to that person, but I want them to stop. I didn't know how. I had no thought process. And that's why being called stupid hit home so hard. Not only was I in special education and didn't talk for a long time, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't. I was confused. And I understand, like my children, it's like there's no excuse for someone who birthed you out your body and who you have to depend on to treat you like that. And I started speaking up once my kids turned 18, although it was the wrong thing psychologically to do. We should have sat with a therapist and the therapist could have helped them and me. And this whole thing wouldn't be such a mess at this age. However, I just wanted to not give my children what other people were giving me. Oh, I took you in this world, take you out. Okay. Child still left blaming themselves. Oh, um, I did the best I could at the time. Okay, child is still left blaming themselves. I'm like, I want my children, no matter what, even if they never speak to me again, which is rightfully so, the wages of sin is death, death to the life that you would have had. That's scripture. The death to the life that you would have had if you hadn't have been a jacked up mother, father, sister, brother, whatever you were to cause a person to rightfully, mentally healthy place to walk away from you. To me, a lot of this mental illness that children think they have isn't mental illness. It's like they don't have anywhere else to go because they would have to blame their parent. And society has taught you, Bible is drilling into you. Children, obey your parents. You know, you can't speak against your parents no matter what they do to you. You can't speak against the pastor. You can't speak against God. You can't ask a question. So a lot of these things we're calling mental illness, we're fueling the APA um, from thousands of mental illnesses. I mean, do you know that hearing God is now a mental illness? Saying that you heard, you can hear God speak to you as an illness. Look it up in the um, American Psychological Association membership thing in the DSM-5. It'll tell you that the spirituality is a mental illness. Hearing God, talking from God, a prophecy, all that stuff is now a mental illness. Don't let me speak about slavery, which isn't true. Because now the slave master who taught you about Christianity now is running the mental health society that a lot of you all can't even get in to get the right treatment if you don't have the right expensive insurance and now they're telling you that what they taught you supposedly on the plantations the god they showed you is now a mental illness come on guys i'm just like you know like I'm somewhere between the whole Kevin Samuels and then there's this other guy who I'll post from Harley Initiated. You guys need to listen to him talk. He talks to just men and he's like, F this, F that. He even calls his wife the bitch words. He calls men the bitch words. He's like, his whole point is to just stop it. Just stop being this weak minded led by the nose like they put the ring in the ox nose you're just leading them look up what a lemon is it's not spelled like the lemon it's lemon however you spell it shoot i was in special education look it up and they follow each other off a cliff stop being that we just went through the c word which you can't say or your channel was taken down but for almost two years we're wearing and then can't go get toilet paper or whatever you had two years by yourself and you didn't sit at no time and ask yourself a question. And all I am, I'm nothing except a person who asked herself questions. I asked the God that I was believing in and shouting in, who was a minister for and everything. What the fuck? What is happening? And then just my natural self from uh, when I talked to my younger sister about, she's like, this came out of your you know, you're so sensitive to hip, uh, when people are hypocritical, you know, I mean, my dad was always talking about lying, you're lying, you're lying, a lying of lying of a mission. What the hell is that? Or straight out lying. You're damn right. I'm lying because your big ass is going to beat my ass and hurt my ass. And I mean, when I went into the military, I weighed like 99 pounds or something. It's on my ID card somewhere. And my dad's 6'4", 200 some pounds. Your dad gonna write him and tell every lie because I'm scared. I'm scared. 
And now my dad is 82 years old, suffering from Alzheimer's in the last last phases of it. And he's scared. He's scared to go outside. He doesn't trust nobody but my brother and his nurse. I'll come see him. Come on, daddy. Let's go outside. No, 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 no. I'm like, I've never hurt my parent. I've never cursed my parents. I said one curse word to my mom when she was going to hit me in my face when I'm bending over and packing my suitcases to leave her house. And I put my arm like like this and said, I don't you don't have to leave. I don't have to leave your and I'm getting you don't have to hit me. I'm getting ready to leave your damn house. Wait, wait. She goes running back to my father. Then his big old self comes to hurt me. And then it's only when I tell them that I was raped. And that's why I came home. <laughs> no, no. I don't want your sympathy. Now I'm going back. I'm going back and get raped again. I'm going back and do whatever. You know, whatever. Whatever. Man. All of this. People are just trying to do the best they can. They're looking after themselves. No matter what their title is. They have no real connection to you when it comes between you and them. You know, I just saw in the news the other day how a woman's unalive because she ran in the house to save her three children in the fire. It's people who won't even do that. I remember when my kids loved the beach. We took them to the beach. Those kids took off running the water. I knew they had been talking about sharks in Jacksonville. And I stood there for a second. I'm like, shit. Oh, shit. I got I to gotta go in the water with my children because I got to get ready to hit these sharks on their nose if they touch my baby however that one second that i pause do you know i mean because i don't want to come back again they say regrets make you come back i don't know what makes you come back i'm still working on that part however i'm not reincarnating for shit i'm gonna ask questions when i leave this earth or whatever happened to me if i go someplace or do something whatever i'm not going near another place without knowing all the facts i want to see paperwork i want to see everything because i don't know how the heck i got here i just know one thing from what i've learned i am no longer doing anything without facts i am no longer following anybody pledging allegiance to anybody calling anyone god but myself i'm gonna keep everything contained in myself so whenever i close my eyes then i close my eyes with myself because you don't know what another person has for you or what. But anyway, I was feeling so bad because I paused for a few seconds to question whether or not to go in the water where my kids already were to protect them if there were any sharks. There weren't. But still, I felt bad. So I'm like, I'm supposed to just... I had seen where the woman was in a wreck a long time ago in the 60s or something. The car was turned over when they did the react and she flipped the car and got her son out the burning car of course it was ledged up against a rock or something whatever her hands were burned everything but she did it and i'm like man it's like <sighs> things that they have told you in the world are automatic aren't automatic and i just i'm just saying ask additional questions that's all i'm saying just ask questions just ask questions and if anyone gets mad at you because you're asking questions it's over 8 billion people on this planet that's not the person to ask about there's a dr seuss book that goes are you my mother are you my mother and it goes through all these different things until he finds his mother i mean i'm not mad at my kids for asking am i their mother i'm not mad at my kids for asking me questions all i wanted to do was for my children not to blame themselves and the exact opposite happened they still blame themselves they blame me they were angry they were hurt they were all different levels of stuff until i found out from um diamonds underscore eight um um nina um the carology lady i posted um yesterday and i posted a lot of stuff yesterday i posted books i t posted people i posted places you can go look for things and start your journey to help you with your journey the ai is going to kick in it's going to start bringing up people who are talking about the same things i'm talking about people who are um like wall street trapper on harley initiated he just um it just came up on my feed and i listened to his story again i mean if he knew my story he would be laughing his mother was a drug dealer his and got he got shot in front of him when he was nine years old you think the man isn't traumatized you know what i'm saying it's like man it's not excusing 
my hurt or anyone else's hurt and pain. This is just a my at moment. That's why I don't believe in the collective and all this stuff the spiritual people say. It's like they move from one place to another without validating even the place they're in. You know, just because the spirit moves and this and that happens, that happens, that happens. If you don't own yourself, if you don't know, like my gift belongs to me, whether it was in the church of laying hands or whether it was Reiki and me getting certified, no matter what it was, it, it, it's, it's me. My gift is me and it operates. My gift has operated in a Bank of America parking lot. My gift has operated when I was a mental health tech and the gentleman came up to me with neuropathy and said he had been healed. I had a dream the night before that an old white man was going to come talk to me. Never talked to me before. He looked like some kind of racist guy. I wouldn't even ever talk talk to him any anyway especially in Jacksonville Florida I mean and so it's like so many things that happen they're mine I own them they're mine and I didn't know it at the time I was giving my power away to everything outside of me and that's what I'm trying to get across and yes I'm all over the place that's just how the F I talk you know I talk that way there's a group of people who love me as Gigi and they've never said I, they can't understand me. They've never said these things that other people who are supposed to love me and care for me have said. They just love... Don't make me start crying. They just love me. And that's what I'm trying to get across. It's like, man, you are so much more than everything. And you'll never know who you are if you always sit yourself up under someone else. And sometimes you may have to sleep in your car. Sometimes you may have to rent one bedroom and raise your kids. I met a lady in D.C. who was right up the street from Howard University. And she walked to class, took her daughter to school, walked to class. And she finished her degree and she even got her daughter tennis lessons. She found people when people heard her story and they saw how she was putting her life back together or whatever, you know? And it's like, I watched that woman live in one room and raise her daughter and graduate from Howard University. It was amazing. I had never seen that. I didn't understand that. I didn't come from that kind of background. However, you know, after I got out there on my own and made a series of choices, I did live in my car. I did have things happen to me. Those things were all choices. You know, no devil, no witch, no warlock, no anything. It's like, man, I just, it's, it's wrong when someone who's bad or evil, which I know there's no bad or evil anymore. It's just people doing what they want to do. When they do something to you. And I, in some scripture in the Bible, it's like, you know, it's when my brother hurt me that that's where the hurt came in. My enemy's supposed to hurt me. They're my enemy. But when someone who's supposed to love you and cares for you hurts you, oh, man, church hurt. Church hurt. Tired of church hurt. Tired of church hurt. You know? And all this hurt and pain to me is coming from the fact is that People aren't owning them shit. Um, oh, the devil. Oh, the devil. Oh, you know. No, it's you. You're making a conscious choice. And what you don't want is to be responsible for the consequences. Because there's consequences of the choice you made. And there's consequences of the ostrac ostrac be ostracized. A long time ago, you couldn't be divorced. People didn't want to be around you. It was the 70s when women were allowed to have credit cards. I mean, it the things were set up so the community, black and whites couldn't marry. You couldn't be divorced. The father automatically got the children. So many things are different. Do you know in the state of Georgia, look it up. You, If you have a child and you're not married, that child is automatically a ward of the state. Did you all know that? Did you all know that? That right now, at any time, you can get into an argument or fuss or fight with your partner, and any judge can go and re, um, enact that law. Because it's on the books, it's an active law. You don't know when you put yourself in that position. That's why I'm saying that to get yourself together 85%, no one should trust anyone in the 85% that you know was a jacked up person. Just because they call themselves mother and they're 60 years old, they can't be an elder if they have not healed themselves and done whatever. 
neither can a man. So it has to be people who are basically saying, I don't care about who I was. Like the, like the people in my community, I'm Gigi and they love me. A lot of them know my story. They're not judging me or holding me against that. They look up to me. They come and sit in my house and stay at my house because I'm someone different to them, which is rightfully so, because I don't have to stay the person I was. I have put in decades of being this person who I am now. However, I don't expect the people who I hurt to trust me and to have the kind of relationship these people have because it's not the same person. It's not the same experience. So it's like you still have to have wisdom in who you choose. And the most important thing about having wisdom, if I don't know stuff about you, which I'm not trying to know your private business, however, I, that hypocrite starts raising up in me about you, I'm leaving you because I'm going to find someone else who's authentic. I understand at certain levels, people don't want to be authentic because they don't want to lose the money they have, preachers. They don't want to lose the money they have, spiritual community. They don't want to lose that. But I don't care. I slept in my car. That money will come from somewhere else. I've had people just walk up to me and just give me money. Money, money. And I'm like, God told me, who? Someone I don't believe in? Okay, well, whatever. All right. You're supposed to have it. I'm not. I'm out. I'm not in it. I'm not in it whether you believe in God, Buddha, no one, no one, whatever. <laughs> I'm giving you this money because I'm not going to be in the wrong place by keeping it to myself. I mean, it's just so many things out there, you know, and I'm available to sit on Zoom and talk about more deeper things. However, the most important things are not my stories. The most important thing you can get from me is that the, whatever I'm talking about, you have in you. You have you. I have me. You can check and see who you are and what you are and what you're supposed to be doing. You could take a break, a step back from whatever hamster wheel you're on and seeing what your life's supposed to be. You could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And if anyone is counting on you and they have a problem with it, other than the children that you birthed out your body, you know, then, then it's just like, okay, I birthed children. So now I can't go as deep as I want to go because I done made this conscious decision and I got to take care of this. So I may have to put some things on hold. However, there's a great level you could work on yourself and do for yourself until your children are old enough like I say, going on, go on off. I, of course, I don't believe in college unless you could pay for it. If you can't pay for it, don't go to college. I believe in cultivating children so that they know what their gifts are. Their gifts may be creating a business or this or that or doing this or that. You know, uh, a lot of people should be homeschooling instead of having their kids in school where you're calling them special needs and autistic and whatever, where the society is getting paid off of these things. There's so many things going on. All I'm asking you is pause what everyone has told you. Stop saying they. Stop blaming the black woman or the black man. Stop blaming Ken or Karen. Stop blaming whoever was your primary caretaker. Just just put yourself on hold for a second and just observe. Just observe. No judgment, just observe. And I'm telling you, patterns will start revealing themselves to you for yourself, not them. So you will stop being in the way of an oncoming car and getting hit. So you'll be like, oh, that's Uncle Johnny. Uncle Johnny is always going to say trash out his mouth. And when he says it, because I'm still in some of my trauma, it hurts me and it starts bringing up a bunch of stuff. And now I'm set back three months. Stop going around Uncle Johnny. You don't have to lie about it. No, Ma, I'm not coming to the house. Well, is it because you're Uncle Johnny? <laughs> if you know to ask the question, you know the answer. I mean, some you just got to cut people off from these titles and being able to say any and everything f to you just because they have a title. If someone doesn't know how to speak to you, they don't. And if you are in the position where you can say, hey, you know what? I would appreciate if you wouldn't call me stupid. Oh, that's just we've been but, but, but we've been calling you stupid since you were two and you didn't mind it then. The disrespect. You don't have to disrespect that person. You have to excuse yourself from them. 
until one, it doesn't bother you, or two, you don't see the need to do that, because number three is never going to happen. They're never going to see where calling you stupid, where they've been calling you stupid since you were boo-boo baby, and you didn't mind it then. That's who you are in their mind, and it's okay. Let them stay where they are. Stop trying to come to awareness of yourself so that you could tell other people who you are, because nobody gives a damn. They don't. They can't. Because you telling people something means they did something wrong and their self-preservation kicks in. That's why I'm saying no forgiveness, no guilt, no nothing. You got to go talk to your therapist so your therapist can help you process the hurt and pain that you got through your family, through your church, through whatever you believed in, whatever you thought shouldn't have hurt you. And then the AI will start picking up on people. Everyone shouldn't be listening to me. I'm too rough. Everyone shouldn't listen to Kevin Samuels. He's too rough. This other guy who has this um, this whole boot camp set up for men for 72 hours costs $15,000. He talks about you like a dog. He curses around his children. They, you shouldn't listen to them. However, it's somewhere out there who is speaking your language that's not so offensive. However, I would ask you to talk to your friends and people who you have around you and hear how you talk to them and speak to them before you're automatically so offended. Because you being so offended by how a person talks is really that you're just not ready for the message because you talk just as trash to other people and things like that. You're just the same way. But oh, now you're hurt. You're only hurt because when you get close to the point of being set free, everything's going to come against you so you don't know yourself. It's still look at the man in the mirror, which is you. Look at the human in the mirror, which is you. And then just say over yourself, you know what? I want to see who I am. I want to know who I am. I want to know what real relationships are, how I see the world. And it'll start happening for your ears to become unstopped. Your eyes can see. Your senses will come online. Everything will stop happening when you just listen to your own voice and accept the consequences of the actions that you take and not blame it on the devil, a witch, or some man who you chose to have children with over and over again, although you say he's all these things. You can't talk about the man without talking about you chose him. You can't talk about the woman without talking about you chose him. You can't talk about the job or the boss or whatever without talking about it's no slavery and you're sitting up there and you're worried about paying a bill so you let someone mistreat you. You may have to calculate it a little bit okay I'm gonna work I used to do it all the time get my paycheck and I know they pay a week in advance so guess what who calls in sick or whatever or most of, at first I would call in sick then I just said F it I'm gonna take my check and go as soon as it clears the bank I transfer it to another account and I'm out I leave right then and there as soon as I see it because I'm I'm better to myself and I know a way to be open now, some of you all may not want to leave, live that radical. Don't live this life if you're not about this life. Because I'm telling you, it's hard. It's sad. It's broken. It's this and that. I've almost had to check myself into the hospital many times. My spirit's like, I'm, I'm like, let me just go lay down. It'll be okay. And every time it's okay. And I have good people around me who are listen to me. What's your part in it? Okay, Storm, you know you're on a three-day cycle. Go lay down, call in to work, whatever, do whatever, and then get up in three days and see what you need. If you're on the fourth day, you haven't taken a shower or gone outside to do whatever. Now, I don't have to do that so much. I just go outside. I love being outside. I just go outside. It starts healing me and everything. I start getting all these thoughts like, wow, the world is a big space. And I got my passport. All right. I got something I have to do because if I don't, by default, <laughs> I'm going to do what I'm saying. I'm going to take a time to to think about it's an exciting week for me I'll let you guys know more as it comes into fruition but I'm so excited I'm so glad no matter what Michael and I go through we just insist on having a better life we insist on things to be better and clearer and more understood and even if we don't know to call it that at the time six years later that's exactly what it is because we are on the same page of not staying in them in a choice that doesn't work for us so all right love all you all take the parts that you can the parts that hurt you dismiss it crazy lady talking about stuff who cares what she says don't care what i say only care what you say love you wholeness <laughs>